as we're about to get started. Um, I just wanted to thank our technology team. I think they did a great job with this conference. I saw Sanaida pop in for just a minute and then pop out. I know she's everywhere, but I just wanted to say thank you to Sanaida and Melissa, to um, Marco and Valentin and Debbie for facilitating um, this conference for us and uh, all the background work they're putting into it. And David as well. Sorry, David, I didn't mean to leave you off when I said all the names right now. All right, well, it is 1.55. I'm going to go ahead and respect your time and get started right away. I'm so happy you guys chose to join the session this afternoon on a Friday when you could have been doing anything else. Um, you chose to be here, to be learning about how to integrate technology in your classrooms and into your professional lives. Um, today's session is going to be on AI and Canva, and we're going to look at how we can make the most of Canva and really make it work for us. Um, my name is Amy Marquez. I'm the Library Innovation Strategist for PSJISD Library Services Department. I'm super excited to be here with you. I'm passionate about libraries and literacy and technology, so those are my favorite things. And um, as I move through the presentation today, please feel comfortable letting me know in the chat um, if you need me to slow down, if you have questions, if you want me to speed up, please tell me that too, because I definitely don't want to waste your time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started sharing my screen and kick this off, okay? Let me see. That sound. Sorry, guys, you're seeing all the background. There it is. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at AI magic with Canva. And we are going to try out some features that are still uh, pretty new to me. So some of these features I've been using for a little while and some as recent as last week. And because AI is always evolving, um, there's always new features coming out. So I try to work hard to continually be um, you know, on the cutting edge right, of what's happening. So before we start uh, really getting into the presentation, I want to get a sense of where you're at with using the tool Canva. And we're going to start right now by trying out something in Canva called Live, Canva Live, OK? So I'm in my Canva presentation, and I click Present, and I'm going to share this interactive live session link with you guys. And I want you to go ahead and join in. You can scan the QR code or you can use the link I'm going to drop in the chat. Sorry, I'll put the QR code right back up. Let me just get this in the chat. Hey, Ms. Torres. Hi. Thanks, guys, for the kind comments. OK, go ahead and join. I'm going to join as well on my device. And I'm going to pose a question in just a second, and we're going to try out how Canva Live works. So this is something you can use. Whoops, let me minimize this. This is something you can use with your students to have them interact with your activity. So this is my question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how comfortable are you with using Canva? With 1 being you're very new to it or you don't have an account, like it's brand new, to 10 being you're like expert, pro, you know, all the things. Go ahead and put in there a number about how comfortable you feel using Canva. Oh, awesome, Kevin. You're new. That's OK. The great thing about today's session is I'm going to look at where you're at right now and I'm going to try to customize as I go to make sure I am reaching the needs of the audience, just like you would do in your classroom. And the way I've set up this presentation is that you're going to it's going to um, gradually get a little more complex. So the first things we're going to look at are the more simple beginner level um, ways to use AI, gradually getting more and more complex. So looking at this chat, we've got 7.5, 8, 3, 1, 8, 5, 8, okay? Awesome. Well, we have a lot of people in this group that are 5 and up, and so that gives me a good sense that we've got a lot of experience, 
Okay. What we're going to be doing today is I want to encourage you. If you already have your Canva account, go ahead and log into your Canva account in the background. Because as I go along, if there's something really cool you want to try, I recommend you try it as we're moving through the session. And the reason why I say that is because you're more likely to retain what you're hearing today if you actually put it into practice. I know for myself, there's a few things I try to do whenever I go to conference. Usually I'm following along with the participant, like I'm sure everybody does, right? But I'm trying out what they're talking about as they're talking about it. The other thing I try to do, I try to take good notes. And then at the end, I try to immediately start putting those things into action, at least a few. Obviously, you learned a lot of information today and you probably can't apply all of them immediately, but at least pick a few things to put into practice right away so that it sticks. All right, lots of great responses. Thank you. Something you, you may notice is that like, for example, here on the screen, we've got Marisol Garcia, Deborah Moreno, and we've also got Anonymous. So when you use this tool with students, you can have students respond anonymously if they maybe might feel uncomfortable with sharing like on an on a scale response. Maybe some don't want to share like that. It's them that doesn't have the experience, right? Or you can have it with names. That way, you know who's answering. OK, now don't answer the question yet. First, we're going to just pause and think for a second. We're going to use again the Canva Live system, but I want you to think about this answer and you can start typing it, but don't hit enter. And I'm so glad Ms. Torres is in this session because she's the one that taught me this. Um, we're going to use a waterfall technique. So what that means is you're going to think about the question. I'll give you some processing time. You're going to compose your answer, but you won't hit enter until I tell you one, two, and then you'll do it on the next number. OK, so the question is, when it comes to designing in Canva, what do you wish were easier? Go ahead and start composing your answer, but don't hit enter yet. Okay. When I say you're going to go ahead and hit enter one, two, three, waterfall. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Right now I'm seeing adding response style slides. Definitely. I can totally relate to that. And we'll talk a little bit about styling slides uh, that I think will help you out. Um, this one right here was mine. Uh, so many choices. How do I decide? I feel overwhelmed. Everything is free. We're going to talk about that in a minute. If that was your comment, we're going to talk about that. If you see money sign, a dollar amount on your thing, something is not correct. We got to get you set up correctly because everything is free for educators. Um, and for me, it's too many choices. Yes, I feel like I love it, but at the same time, I'm overwhelmed. And then it's hard for me to get started because I want to see all the options, but there's so many options. So it's like decision fatigue uh, for me sometimes. Now, as uh, we go through, I'm going to toggle back and forth. You're going to see Canva in present mode sometimes. You're going to see Canva in the edit mode where you're actually manipulating um, the tool. OK, um, so the reason I'm going to do that is because I want you to see how it could work with students. So, for example, just like we used live, if your students have devices and can connect, you could do live with them and have them put answers. Um, the other thing to note is you can take advantage of the little thumbs up feature. So what I'd love for you to do is take a look at some of these comments here and put a thumbs up by one of them that you feel like resonates with you. So, for example, lots of choice. Go ahead and try out that little thumbs up. It's a great way to give uh, quick feedback in class too. I love that the tool is easy to use. Excellent. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. All right. As we move forward, I'm going to need to exit in just a second from live view because I'm going to show you that background that I was talking to you about. Go ahead and exit for just a second. OK, so I ended live view. Now we're in a bigger view. If you're using this with students, that's something to keep in mind. Um, so when it comes to AI tools in education, like why would we want to use them? I know AI is a hot topic. 
I'm sure since the opening session, uh, there's been talk about AI probably in every session. And because it's trending and evolving, we're going to continue to hear about it. And when it comes to Canva, AI that's embedded inside there, it can help make your tasks easier. And some examples of that include removing backgrounds, custom font pairings, styles. We saw somebody with a concern about, you know, figuring out all the styles, um, something called bulk create, and then also magic tools. So when it comes to um, each of these, like I mentioned before, we're going to uh, see this presentation and it's going to start more basic um, applications and then it'll gradually get a little bit more complicated. So if you're brand new, don't be stressed as we move forward. If it's more complicated than you're ready for, not that it's too complicated. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, and if you already know some of these things, stick with me because by the end, I'm like 100% sure you're going to be like, oh my gosh, wow, really? I did not know it did that. All right, so level one is going to be color palettes, background remover, and font pairing. And let me minimize this for just a second. So you're going to see in this presentation step by step how to do different things that you can come back and refer to. I will share the link at the end of the presentation. This first one has to do with um, tutorials for color palettes. So when it comes to Canva, like you want all your things to, um, you know, go along with each other, right? Like to complement each other. So anytime you add in an image, Canva does something really neat. Hold on, let me see if I can take care of that one. Okay. Camp Canva does something really neat um, where it auto generates some, sorry, some different colors that go along with your palette. So for example, this image, if I click something else that I want to change the color of, like for example, the background, I can scroll down and I can see that it already pre-populated colors from this image right here that I could add in. Okay, if I wanted to complement, like maybe I wanted this, to complement a color in there. I can click here to my colors, scroll down and see, you know what? I already have this pink. Maybe I wanna use that. It's like in here somewhere, okay? The other thing you can do to, to gather colors is you can click the plus button and get the color dropper, okay? So maybe I wanna match this color and grab that color. Um, now, let's look at a brand new template. So this one is just a sample blank template. And let's say you have a picture of something, whatever it is. Uh, it can be that you got it from inside the photo library or you had this picture yourself. I'm going to find a couple to show you an example of. For example, this one. One of our librarians made this picture. If I wanted to make my background um, complement this picture, I can click on my background, click on color. And then when I scroll down a little bit, Canva has automatically created these recommended colors for me so i could put that pink behind it i could try with that pink i mean that yellow <laughs> sorry that's not a pink um or like i mentioned before i can get my little color dropper maybe i want to try this blue um let's try one more time to see how that works again so another example of a photo that i imported i just uh, found it it's like a color palette and you can search for color palettes. There's color palette generators. You can search for those to kind of generate color palettes on a theme. That's like a whole nother training. But if you look up color palette generator, um, there's like amazing stuff in there. So if I click the background, I'm going to scroll down and look at this pretty palette it, it designed for me. Those just complement perfectly with what I'm working on. And sometimes that's part of it. Like what color scheme do I go with? Okay. So that is our first one, the color palette uh, generator. The next thing we can do is we can um, remove backgrounds. So when it comes to photos in Canva, a lot of times um, there's great photos right inside Canva. This one is a stock photo. I don't know if you call it stock, but it's like comes from Canva. Um, however, I don't really want this picture of a student, you know, with a student looking to the side. I just want the teacher by herself. So when I click on that, I can click edit photo. And then I can click background remover. And if you check it out, that looks a lot better. Now it has like a little part here. 
that I don't really like. So I've got a couple solutions for me for um, you if this happens to you. You could just resize it, right? Like cut off that part, center her a little bit so she's centered in the background and that takes care of the issue. Or when you click on the photo and you edit, there's also magic eraser where you can go in there and erase just little parts of your photo. So as you try out these tools, if you come back and look at the steps, the steps are gonna be right here to help you, okay? Let's go ahead and look at one more. The next one has to do with font pairings and suggestions. When it, and, and I guess before I even move forward, somebody mentioned that, um, you know, not everything's free. So with Canva, hold on just a second. Please mute it, okay, hon? With Canva, um, what you need to do is make sure that you log in with your school credentials. When you're logging in and connecting your educator account to Canva, you have access to everything. Everything is included. So if when you're in Canva, you see prices, that's not your educator account. You need to make sure that you set it up. If you have any trouble, you can reach out to me. Your school librarians are very experienced with Canva. The instructional technology team can help you, but you just you want to make sure you're in your educator account. And you'll know you're not if you see prices on things. That's it shouldn't have any prices. OK, so this one has to do with fonts uh, pairing. When it comes to making designs, really it's recommended that you don't use too many different fonts because it like makes the design a little bit too busy for other people that are looking at it. Um, and uh, Canva can help suggest fonts to you. So here's the steps. You choose a font that suits your mood, click on design, then styles, and then font sets, and it will help you generate um, more ideas. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out why does my side panel, oh, there it goes on the top. So I'm going to click on one, I'm going to click on design, and then I had to scroll down a little ways. So it starts like this at the top, but if you scroll down a little ways, here are font sets. So these are some different font pairings that it can automatically suggest to you. To kind of have give you a starting point, right? So I think this is a great way to, um, you know, kind of like, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just get stuck and want to use the same font all the time. Um, or I get lost looking at the fonts a real long time and I can't decide on which font. So this can help kind of ease that for you. And you can even apply to all your pages at once if you want to make a change to everything. Okay, now let's look at level two. Level two includes Magic Write and Magic Design website. So, and let me point out, Magic Design website, if you click on this little link here, it'll give you a whole bunch more information about it. But starting with Magic Write, the way that Magic Write works is Canva now has Canva Docs. So it's similar to Google Docs, except it's right inside of Canva. And um, you can go in there and you can open a doc and then you can use the plus button and it's kind of like ChatGPT built right inside of Canva Docs. So let me show you what that looks like. This is the home page for Canva. If I, whoops, if I click on Docs, and then right here's start, right, with a new doc. Then I can click this plus button where it says add magic, and I can click magic, right? And it can help me, just like the way ChatGPT, if you put a certain, like, um, you know, little description, then it can generate for you. So let me show you one I already did. So for this presentation, I used as many AI features as I could, and I'll try to highlight them in a minute so you can see all the different ones I used. Um, but I thought, well, I mean, work uh, smarter, not harder, right? How can I use Magic Write to help me um, think of how we could use Magic Write for teachers? <laughs> so I had it generate five ideas for using Magic Write as a teacher. All I did was I clicked that plus button, and I put this five ideas for using Magic Write as a teacher. And it created for me, first it created this right here, these uh, ideas. And if I go down a little bit more, hmm, I don't know what happened to number five. Oh, I know what happened. Well, I'll tell you right now. I'll explain why it only has four. It generated five originally. And then in the last session, I clicked on one of these and I clicked the put plus, excuse me, the plus, I got tongue tied there. Um, no, I highlighted it and I clicked the plus button 
And now I have some options so I can expand it, summarize it, rewrite it or edit. Um, so what I did in the last session is I expanded it. So like this one says we can use magic right to provide feedback on student writing. Well, like what exactly do you mean there? Uh, magic, right? So then it goes ahead and tells us a little bit more about how we can use magic rights for feedback. And once I did that, it renumbered my my uh, items. So you see how it's like one and then over here is another one. And then well, down here, it's another one. So that's how it got off track of the numbers. But um, so pretty cool, right? We can use this um, to help us as we plan things. We can use it for lesson plans, writing prompts, tons of different ways, pretty similar to chat GPT. Okay. Here's my example that I just showed you. And now besides just that, there's so many more ways you can use magic, right? And I found a super short video. It's like a minute long and it's really engaging. So I'm going to show it to you because I think you'll appreciate it um, because it just explains it way better than I can, I think. You go ahead and get us going and I'm going to press play and I'm going to give you a second to check it out. Don't blink because there's really cool stuff. It goes real fast. And so you can see right here, right inside any of the designs you're working on, there's a Canva assistant. And we'll look at magic design in a minute, but what we were just talking about was magic right. And so if, for example, I need ideas for using magic right, uh, let me say for teachers. Sorry, I realize that's very small. Uh, but we can see it says writing prompts, vocabulary building, writing feedback, writing games. Of course, we wouldn't want to put it right on top of such a busy slide, but I just wanted to demonstrate that you can do it on any of your slides. OK, let's go ahead and look at the next one. And this one, I think, will come in very handy for you guys. So um, magic design. Basically, the way that it works is that you can go in Canva and create a new presentation and click magic design and just tell it what to make for you and it will make you a framework for your presentation. So I tried this out. I want to say for the first time, maybe around April, I had a training for the library department and it was on a topic called teaching books. And I thought to myself, teaching books is kind of um, a very specific topic. I mean, every topic specific, but like it's not like I just could Google it and find a really like a bunch of resources on it um, the way you might like another like let's say Rosa Parks or something right um, so I thought well this is a real test so I put it in what I was looking for and it generated a really great presentation now it wasn't perfect I had to go in and put my own um, parts in there and really customize it but at least it gave me a starting point for this particular presentation and I'll show you how to do it right now 
the entire presentation I made with Magic Design. So you can see, and I'll show you a breakdown of which slides um, populated uh, with Magic Design and which ones I went in and customized. But for example, my um, cover of the presentation, the introduction, the benefits, all of those were designed by AI. I wanted to leave it just as it came so that you could really see like what you know, it automatically comes with, and then I'll talk to you about which parts I customized in a second. But before I do that, how? How do we do it? So the way that we do that is you would create a new presentation, and I'm going to show you on the home screen. You can click presentation, and then right here to create a blank one. I opened the blank one already, um, but that's how I got here. And then once you're in here under the design tab, there's one that says magic design. And once you're in there, it's just like magic, right? Use five or more words to describe your presentation topic. And for my example, for the topic for today, the five words I used or more, because it doesn't have to just be five. I put step-by-step -step guide to Canvas AI features for educators. And then it generated some different choices for me of styles, okay? So it showed me a few different templates and I was like, which one of these did I wanna move on with, right? So once I picked out the style, then I got to select it. It pre-populated some of them and I'll show you which ones. And then I added additional slides and I worked on colors. So um, for example, this one right here, AI Magic with Canva, it came up, make it bigger so you can see better, sorry. There it goes. It came up with um, this, right? This was the title I had already given the technology team. So I put the title myself and it put this picture. I left the picture here because I wanted you to see. It does populate images. However, I saw this image and I was like, mm, that's not really what I was going for. Cause I mean, we're talking about educators and not that none of you like ring lights, but it didn't really capture where I was trying to, you know, go with the presentation. But I wanted to show you that AI, uh, it does a good job, but it is still hit or miss, right? Um, so I just searched for something else that I thought might fit better. And I went in and I, I uh, substituted images for those that I felt were not the best fit. So this one it made for me. Of course, right now I changed the image. Um, this one right here, it made for me. It made this one, this one, this one. So it made all these for me with the step-by-step -step guide. What it didn't make for me was the ones that said level one, level two, that was just like my idea to kind of break it down by levels for the presentation. Of course, this one where I put a sample of my work, it didn't do that because I had to take a screenshot and put that in myself or the video, I you know did that myself. But all the step-by-step -step, uh, slides, it generated. Um, and then I just added in my extra little parts that I thought would, go well on those slides. And then the fun thing after you have it all generated is you can go in there and play with colors and things. So I'll show you real quick what that looks like because I saw somebody uh, mentioning earlier about designing as one of the things that maybe was a little bit like, um, you know, held them back or whatever. They felt a little bit hard. So when you're in Canva, you can make yourself a brand template. This uh, presentation is getting some extra stuff. The other presentation didn't, but you can create a brand. So for me, I made a brand for the library services department and I picked colors that I liked. You can see I made a Malibu Barbie one and then soft colors. And so these are some that I made and saved so that I could reference them whenever I wanted to. Why would I want to? Uh, well, it makes it easier for me to be consistent on different things that I make that they maintain the same colors. The other thing is that I can quickly change styles in my projects. So for example, let me do this one. Hopefully this will be a good one. Um, and under the design tab and styles, I can click here and it will quickly change the colors for me so that I can pick what I feel like works best for this presentation. The other thing I can do in here, like we talked about before, was the fonts, right? And so then I can apply my changes to all the slides. I can apply my font change to all the slides if I wanted to. Let's see if I can find a font I like. It even has some palettes in there already. So like maybe I wanted, no, I don't like it, sorry. Maybe I want this one, right? Then I could apply it to all the pages, which is pretty cool. It makes it the changes very fast. And then down here, 
it's recommending some different combinations. So maybe you're into this one. <clears throat> Horizon. And then I can just kind of keep scrolling through until I find the combination of colors I like. So that's pretty neat. Okay. Go ahead and go back to where we were before. All right, we are at level three. We are going to look at text to image and translate. Text to image is a lot of fun and it's kind of hit or miss, so it's not always perfect, but it is fun. Every time I try text to image, like I'm just get stuck there and I want to use it a few times in a row. The way that it works is when you're in Canva and you're in the elements tab, of course, you can search for lots of different elements and there's like a million billion tons of resources. However, that can be overwhelming, right? And sometimes it's hard to find what you're looking for. So for as a librarian or working with the library department, I'm always looking for books in my um, my posts and things that I have to make. And you would think that would not be hard to find, but to find it just how I want it, sometimes I, it's like not, it's like, no, that's not the book that I'm looking for or whatever, right? So that's when, uh, text to image can really come in handy. You can use the AI feature and give uh, specific directions on what kind of image you want to have. And the way that you access it is in any design you're in, you can go to the apps right here. And then you can, right here, I had searched earlier in the previous session, uh, you can search text to image, but right now it populates because it's one of the featured items. I'm going to go ahead and click it. This was from the previous um, session. So let's say my um, text to image is going to say um, duck on a bike. I don't know. Maybe you just read a book and I had a duck on a bike. I'm not sure. I just picked it. So I'm going to go ahead and click create my image. And it's going to generate a few. Sometimes they are ridiculous and it doesn't make any sense, but sometimes they're pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, I was not anticipating like real life pictures with the stuck. I was picturing something else, but I mean, that's, you know, kind of kind of cute. OK, what I was thinking more of and if I go down here to styles, I have more options. I was thinking more like, you know, like a cartoon duck or something. Right. And maybe I should have said cartoon duck, but I mean, you can always go back and and kind of like hone in. That's the thing with AI. It's all about how specific you are with your guidance for AI so it can give you what you want. Um, I mean, they're OK, like it could be better, but, you know, I hit generate again just to see if it could give us some more different ones. There are a whole bunch of different styles. So once you start playing with it, it's like you just for me, I just wanted to keep playing. This is so funny. What in the world? Like it's a bike that is a duck. I said a duck on a bike, not a duck that is a bike, but you know, <laughs> I guess. Okay, so let me show you mine and I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see it better. So I someday would love to write a children's book and I like llamas. And of course I've been a librarian for a long time. So I'm like, it has to be a llama librarian. And um, so I put llama like cartoon llama librarian on the um, keywords. And uh, I think they came out really, really cute. I love this one over here. I don't know something about him. He looks kind of realistic. And then he's got like the neon tips on his ears. Like, I don't know, and the psychedelic one. And this one over here, the llama with the coffee. Like what? That's so cute. Um, but if I just searched in the elements for a, a llama librarian, I mean, these would not have populated. So just a cool little feature you could try out. OK, the other thing you can do is you can translate your designs. Now, um, a lot of times we make materials and we want those materials in both English and Spanish and right inside Canva. So long as you're not in a doc, you can translate. The project you're working on, so let me go ahead and. Up here, right, I'm still in the apps menu. I'm going to put translate. I'm going to go ahead and say translate. I'm going to automatically detect the language and I'm going to translate it to Spanish. I guess I could have searched Spanish, but I'm already here now. OK, and then you can apply to all the pages or just the current page, which is what we're going to do. Oh, darn it. I thought I was clicking on the right thing. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Spanish. I want it. I didn't mean to change the. 
I didn't mean for it to move the top one. Okay, that's what I meant to do. Automatically detect the language and tra translate it to Spanish. When I hit translate, it's going to duplicate my slide for me. It will retain the original one. And so now I have the one in English and the one in Spanish. What I would say is, of course, proofread it because I mean, it's just like when you use a translation tool online, they're not perfect, but at least it gives you a starting point. So you don't have to you know, write everything over again in a second language. So that's a pretty cool little feature. So here's an, a real world example. Let me make it bigger so you can see it better. <clears throat> I've been working on some posts for the library department social media, and um, I wanted to try out this feature. So we're trying to highlight the different sustainability goals. This was the post in English, and then I put translate, and then this is how it translated it for me. Of course, you would want to be careful to proofread. You would want to also look at how things um, appear on the page, because sometimes because the translations are shorter or longer, you have to sort of resize, um, you know, the fonts and stuff. But I think that could be a real time saver. Now, this one's the big one. This one is the one that I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. If you're new, I would just say like learn the other things first and work up to this one. But if you've been using this for a while, you're like a five, six, seven, eight, you're ready. Definitely. So Canva has something called bulk create. The way bulk create works is you can upload a bunch of information either manually or with a file and have Canva create the different pages of your design. Okay. And the way this all came about for me, like learning about it is, like I mentioned in the previous one, this one, uh, I'm making some posts for social media. This one in particular has to do with sustainable development goals and which books in Mac and Via we have that people could check out. And as I started making the posts, I'm like, okay, I was going to Mac and Via, I was seeing what books were there, I was getting the title, then I was getting the author, the summary, the interest level, the book cover, then I was going into Canva and repeating that process for every one of my slides. And I was like, okay, I mean, I like what's coming out, but it's a lot of steps, right? So I thought there's got to be a better way. And then I saw this video and I was like, oh my goodness, this is the answer to what I've been looking for. If I will link everything in a minute so that you can have access to this, but I will not play the video right now because it's longer than time will allow. However, I really like this series. It's a guy and a girl. They take turns sharing Canva tips. They're Canva creator, creatives, creators. I'm not sure exactly, but they're associated with Canva and they have like amazing content all the time. That's where I get a lot of the like trend, trendiest, newest features of Canva from their channel. Um, and what he was showing was that we can app smash chat GPT to make our workflow faster. And so the basics of it are this. I went into to chat GPT and I said, and I'll show you the exact script because if you're new to chat GPT or you haven't been getting the results you want, it really makes a difference how you word things. But basically, um, I said, I want to make social media posts for my school district. Create a table using the following book titles, include a caption for my post, include the title, the author, the interest level, you know, all these specific things. And then once it did that, I imported a file into Canva and it created the content for me. And I mean, I was like, wow. I mean, really, I'll show you right now so you can see a few examples. So in chat GPT, and I'll share this with you, like I mentioned in a little bit. This is what I did. Well, first of all, here's the video in case you want to watch back through the steps because I'm giving you the very condensed version. I put a prompt like this one. I told chat GPT the task was to create social media posts, 10 posts to get students and their families excited about back to school books. Um, so. I had to create a table here, generate a table with the following columns. Column one, a caption for the post. Column two, a book title. Column three, the author. Column four, the summary, consisting of only one sentence. Column five, the book covers. Now, it was a learning curve for me because the first time I did it, I hit enter and I forgot to tell it the book covers. So then it just picked different books. And I was like, no, 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 chat GPT, wait, because I don't have those books. So then if you keep 
working with it. You can tell it, no, generate the table again, but do this. Like you can keep honing in. Once I included the titles and I thought, let me just try not giving it the authors for some of them and see how that goes. So I put only the titles for most of these. And then I hit enter and it created this table for me. So it's a caption, attention rookie readers, join the mission with mission back to school, top secret info for rookie students and gear up for an exciting school adventure. Oh my gosh. If you do PR post after a while, it's like, what do I put as the caption? Chat GPT can make the captions for you. So it made the caption for me. It took the book title I gave it. It found the author, it found the grade levels and it made a one sentence summary. It was like, perfect. So from there, the next step that I did is I copied this table into Excel. You have to, I only put it in Word so that you could visually see it a little bit easier, but you have to put it in Excel because you have to export it as a CSV file. The video shows you all the steps. Once I exported that file, I went over to Canva and I imported it. So let me show you what that looks like. My homepage, I'm gonna go to my projects. So these are my back to school posts. I can make it a little bigger for you. I wanted to advertise, you know, books about getting ready for back to school because I'm sure kids are excited and we have a ton of ebooks on it. Um, so on the left hand side over here, there's a button that says bulk create. If you don't see it, click on apps, because sometimes if you haven't used it recently, other things might be in your side column. When I clicked bulk create, it gives me two options. I can enter manual, enter data manually, which means it makes kind of like a spreadsheet right here and I put in all the information or I can upload a CSV file. So I uploaded the file and once you do, it's going to it generates a template. So let me show you what that template looks like. Uh, getting a tour of all my all my uh things i've been working on i tell you i'm using uh canva like multiple times a day because it's just great for everything so this is the template that it created i don't want you to think it created the background it didn't do all this like i put this together and i just found a template and then customized it what it did do was it linked the information that i it linked the information that I uploaded so that every time from the spreadsheet, the titles would go here, the authors would go here, the summary would go here, the interest level would go here, the picture would go here. And once it read the file, it generated each of these. So here's one, here's that one, here's that one. Here's this one. I mean, talk about time saving, right? So that I don't have to go one by one and look up all this information. So I'm gonna show you one more example of bulk create and how to use styles to make each post a little different. So this one you'll notice, let me pick it up so that you can see it all, all of the different ones. They're identical. It's just the book, you know, with the summary and title and things changing, but the rest stayed the same. But there is a way to go in there and kind of make changes to all the others, like so that there's variations on each page. So let's look at what that looks like. This one right here. OK, uh, well, this is my template. Just like I showed you on the other one, and this is the actual like finished product. What I did is I used ChatGPT to help me develop tips to develop a love of reading for parents. And then I took those tips that I liked the most and I imported them with bulk import, bulk create. Oh my goodness, I think it crashed. Let's see if it'll restore quickly for us, sorry. Okay, well, that wasn't too bad. Let me try one more time. Hopefully it'll cooperate here. Am I still with you guys? It made a sound. Oh, okay. I was like, it made a sound that it was somebody's waiting in the lobby. I thought it had dropped the signal for a minute. Okay. So look, this is the same basic template. 
and I put in the tips and then I did rotate out the person myself. Like I went and found pictures of people reading and put them in there. Um, and then I was like, OK, well, it could look the same for all of them, but how can I make it look a little different from one to one, like from the first one to the next one? So go ahead and make one bigger again. Okay. Zoom in a little bit so you could see it better. So here it is. Tips to develop a love of reading for parents. Be a reading role model. Let your child see you reading regularly to instill the importance of reading in their daily life. Move that a little bit. OK, um, and then here's another one, right? So for each of these, I can go over here to styles. And if you already have a color palette, if you already have fonts, you can come in here and just click through and generate different things. So for example, let's look at the color palette first. Woo, that's pretty bold, but you can keep cycling through and see if there's something that is a good fit for what you like. Or maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I want this color palette. Or I can try the other one. It does pre-populate some color palettes for you that you can start with too. And then if you look at this one over here, I did some brand um, fonts. I found this one. I just thought it was super cute. If you like hearts, you have to write down this font name. It's called Lulu Font TH. It's like because there's so many fonts, sometimes it's hard to find fonts otherwise, but like really write down the name of the font, Lulu Font TH, if you like little hearts and girly stuff, because that is just so cute, the little hearts on top of the text. Um, so anyways, yeah, I thought like that is very, very cool. A, a great way to like speed up your workflow. See? Let me get us back to where we were in the presentation. We already did Spanish, we already did bulk create. This one I showed you real briefly, the, the different ones I made, right, with bulk create. And then I just wanna share what I made. I'm sorry, my dog is being noisy. Uh, what I made in this presentation with AI. I use Magic Design for the template and for the formatting, and then I customize it. The color palette, I used it in branding and then I went over here and I um, customized how I wanted the colors. The background remover on slide six, the one I demoed for you. Magic write on slide 10. Text to image, all the llama librarians. And then translate, we did the, the sample together and of course, bulk create, we got to try that out too. If bulk create sounds exciting to you, highly recommend you watch the video. It's worth it, it's a little long, but it's worth it because it walks you step by step through the whole process. And I'm going to give you a bonus really quick because I know we're almost out of time. If you're in Canva on your home screen, if you have not set up your brand hub, I mean, right now I'm, I used to be the um, PR rep for PSA Collegiate. So that's why I have this one here, um, but I'm no longer the rep, but you can have multiple brand templates. So even if you're not like the PR rep for your school, I mean, you can have your own brand for yourself with your own logo and stuff. And you click on one and then you can go in there and make your logos. You can pick your colors. You can have different palettes so that you can find the colors you like quickly. And then you can put custom fonts. And then that's how it pre-populates for me because I went into the brand hub and I put the things that I like. If you love color palettes and you need a starting point, there's a really cool color palette generator called Coolers. And the way Coolers works is there's a whole bunch of pre made ones. Click accept. Yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to click on that. Sorry. Sorry. Um, there's a bunch of pre made ones. So you can explore palettes that are made already, or you can do the palette generator. And this is a total bonus because we didn't talk about this in the other session, but um, I'm hitting the space bar and it it starts to generate different things. So like, oh my gosh, I like this one, let's say. And then I can keep generating and then like, okay, I like this one too. And then I just keep going until I find the one combination of things that I really like. Okay. All right, you guys, I think that was a lot of information. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you're walking away with um, something you want to try out. It's been a pleasure uh, hanging out with you this afternoon. Let me see. I got in the wrong screen. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm here if you have questions. <laughs>